brief and basically put together the team. And Paul Kong is, <coughs> excuse me, Kong is a statistician, Chris Frederick, myself, and my wife, Danny Frederick. Briefly, this was a post presentation that uh, my wife did. My, my passport was expired when I went to the airport and they said, you have to go home, you can't go to Berlin with your wife. I was shocked. Um, so my wife did the whole uh, post uh, presentation, which is very well received. And this is the Fascia Research Congress, which is put together by the Fascia Research Society, which is the preeminent scientific organization in science of fascia. So that went over very well. So background, many musculoskeletal techniques are used, as we know, to treat pain and dysfunction, low back pain. But m many of them, if not most, are still regionally localized. We get caught up in the diagnosis. We have to work on this. Insurance guides us to work on this localized region, even though, even though we know the foot may be part of it, the neck may be part of it. FST assesses and treats local pain and dysfunction through a different approach. We go through the specific fascial chains in which these variables are contained. You can call them kinet kinetic chains, mechanical linkages. There's different words really for the same connections from head to toe. And then it's treated locally as indicated. And so this is an example. I had an artist draw this up. It's not just the old muscle body that we're used to. It's, it involves the net. So that's that little spider web showing this visual connection that it's all connected. So even if you have that localized low back, you still need to account for what's going on down below, distal, as well as far above. So in FST, we use combined models. Most of us know about the regional interdependence model. It was really brought to light by physical therapists in 2007, even though there is a lot of um, reference to this idea of thinking way before, even in 1977, believe it or not. And hopefully many of us are able to do this approach today because really that's how you don't miss what is the driver in the problem. And so we all know about the biopsychosocial, but we have to account for, this is called allostasis. All allostasis is considering all systems of the body, even though you have a regional diagnosis, you always have to think of the background what's happening there. So not a visceral and, and so on and so forth. So we, we do use this model and a lot of PTs are using this model, but we're mixing in with the new fascial anatomy. That's more recent over the last 20 years. And Freya, I can't remember, it's like fascial research, embodiment informed. I can't remember what it all stands for, but in Body Worlds, hopefully some of you went to some of the Body Worlds, you saw that. This is the first plastination they did, that's their technology, to preserve a fascial anatomical model or specimen. They've never did that before. So we got to see that two years ago at the Fashion Research Congress in Montreal, and she was, she was spectacular. She was in this dance pose, and she was absolutely beautiful. It's nice to walk around and look all the fascial connections there. So this is the new fascial anatomy that I feel we should, we need to get more informed about this. Our hypothesis was subjects receiving FST, fascial stretch therapy, will have reduced non-specific low back pain and enhanced activities of daily living scores. And of course, all the subjects were consented as part of the University of Arizona approved IRB. Methods and results, we had 11 subjects at this time, seven females, four males, between the ages of 20 to 32. We had one, two, or three successive FSD treatments week by week. The treatments consisted of being 30 minutes, three straps were used to stabilize one leg down on the table. We did eight stretches per side, and I have to say, my wife was the clinician in the study. She did all of the work. I'm the writer in the family. Um, pain and ADL scores measured pre and one and three day post FST. So in the table, you can start to see the distribution of where we had the improvements. We used a linear mixed effects model to ascertain the relative percent change in scores over time using pre-treatment time uh, point as the reference group because we didn't have a control group. We had uh, something to reference about pre-treatment time. All p-values were two-sided, and p less than 0 0.05 was considered statistically significant, which is marked by the x's in the table. And um, ba basically, the scores are related to the first column pain, the second BAT means bathing, the third CEI is car ingress, egress, or transfer in and out of car, 
TY's toilet use, FOB's forward bending, and dressing the area. So you can see there's a distribution mm -hmm. of improvements uh, over, the, over those weeks. The conclusion was that both single as well as multiple, because some people can only come in once, they didn't come in again. So single as well as multiple successive 30 minute FST treatments improved pain and ADL scores with the highest improvement seen mostly in pain and forward bend. The score improvements noted in the table that you just saw range from 31 to 57% compared to the pre-treatment time point, so it was statistically significant. From this and future studies, we had hope, we hope that uh, beginning evidence-based clinical guidelines for the use of FST in treating chronic non-susceptible back pain will hopefully be developed over time. Limitations, of course, was low sample size and lack of a control or no treatment group. And the clinical relevance is persistent high prevalence of low back pain globally was highlighted in a systematic analysis study conducted during 20 years, 1990 to 2000, oh, more than 20 years, 30 years. And I have a reference down below. Cases of low back pain remained the worldwide leading cause of years of living with disability pain. So that's extremely significant, and it's still a, a huge issue, as we all know. So it's, it's clear that the statistical significance of reducing pain while improving function in this study has clinical relevance as one method or modality that can be easily and efficiently adopted and implemented by a variety of medical, well, allied health professionals. So you don't have to be uh, a medical, medically trained to do these techniques. It's just working with a knowledge of fascial anatomy and understanding, of course, you know, the healing process and the basics of wound healing, things like that, and inflammation stages. But with that knowledge, coupled with your fascial anatomy, there is a choreography of movement that systematically and, and functionally goes through the entire body to screen out where are the issues and basically clean up with some global movement clean up the restrictions, if there are restrictions, determine if anything's hypermobile, which you would not stretch, and then hone in on anything local that's still left over, just to kind of put it in a nutshell. So, we just finished the same exact study at the same place, University of Arizona Medical School. We just finished on October 18th, so this is fresh, hot off the press. And our, our hypothesis is exactly the same, but this time we have 23 subjects, yay. More than twice than before. 17 females, six males, ages 22 to 42. Most of them were medical students. Thank, thank goodness for the medical students. They saw that as a break from their <laughs> horrendous schedule. Uh, 11 were experimental who actually received the technique. T uh, 12 were control who did not receive the technique. It was done twice a week, every two weeks for eight weeks total. And the brief summary is the fascial kinetic chains, which we like to call the 3D nets, fascial nets, net being three-dimensional, all encompassing, going from skin down to bone is fascial anatomy. It's not just the fascia lata, the tensor fascia lata, or the fascia lata. It is all comprehensive when you really study the anatomy. And we focused on specific chains, uh, the lateral, the front, and spiral. And they were pretty much whole, whole body. Of course, the back is the core of it all. We worked above and below that area. All subjects receiving FC received it in an atmosphere that was pain-free, that was quiet, it was, and it was low light conditions. So we actually had one of the, we were very fortunate to get a space that was ideal. The experimental group received the FST, if you want to call it stretching, but it's really not stretching as we know it. Okay, it's not, the purpose is not to always to lengthen. The FST is not all about that. That's what I learned in PT school, and it's not to deform tissue, and it's not always just to stretch it to a new length. That's not really part of this. We can talk about that later. But they receive the movements, the mobilizations, from the first barrier of resistance called R1, which most of us, many of us are familiar with that terminology, to R2, where the barrier can go into the next where you have a successive increase of resistance, but obviously to no pain and nothing really to deform anything in particular on purpose or with your intent. The control group received zero resistance to the point of when R1 started. So they didn't really see the work. Um, 
this will be submitted for publishing, hopefully, in a peer-reviewed article or journal in 2025. Just a word about fascia. Centuries of anatomy and medical study, they discarded and disregarded fascia as waste. So all that stuff went in a bucket. So we can see the organs and the muscles and the nerves. Acupuncture has 3,000 years of practice-based evidence, and now we have a lot of evidence-based research on the fascia system because all the meridians, all the acupuncture meridians, sit in the connective tissue. That's where they are. When we used to look for them on MRI, we're like, they don't exist. Well, we're not looking. You, you know, that's not where we should have looked. It's the fascial system, which is really the newest of the body sciences, if you will, and that's where they, they have detected the meridian system. The Fashion Research Society, like I said, was, is the preeminent organization in this kind of research, and they were established in 2007, and they were launched at Harvard Medical School, where my wife and I attended. We're founding members of the society, and it's PhDs to clinicians. It's people like us, all the way to the highest levels of research. So it's a really great organization because we tried to talk to each other. We went through the growing pains that researchers are talking above our head. They're talking about stretching rat tails. We don't care about stretching a, a, a rat's tail. We care about, you know, what does it mean to a human? And so now we're speaking to each other, and actually a lot of, of the scientists have received FSD. So that's why we're invited to do the research, actually. This book, I'm not promoting it. Uh, I don't sell it, but a colleague of mine wrote it with an MD. I just want to read this. I think it's really, really uh, enlightening. In medical school, because that's what she was talking about, I put that bracketed, and I quoted the rest. Clearing out the fascia changed my perception in regard to the intricacies of the organs and circulatory system. The fascia was just garbage in that, par in that paradigm of what I now know as classical anatomy. Now I understand anatomy from a functional perspective, and from that perspective, fascia is gold. And she's one of the co-editors. And her son was not helped by all the people she knew as an MD, was not helped with his injury, she brought her, him, her son to a fascial practitioner, or uh, clinician. He, he helped him in within a few sessions. It was incredible that, you know, the people that she trusted and worked with colleagues and their people, whoever else they, she kept, they referred to this young man, they couldn't help him. And this practitioner is technically not medically trained, all for the answer. I think that's a lesson for all of us, just we need to get to know and understand what is fascia, there's over 20 types, and just to get to really, maybe even, you know, become part of that organization, the Fashion Research Society, check them out. Thank you, that's my, me and my wife.